but I'm starting a series today, and uh, it's just, I don't know, uh, just being spending my life in construction and all that, we always had, uh, you know, we could always call 1-800-GOT-JUNK. I don't know if you all ever know what that is now, but, you know, you could always call these folks, and they would come get all the junk out of a house that you needed gotten out um, so we could uh, begin a remodel and things like that. Um, so we're going to start a series today called Got Junk, and because y'all got it. I know you're too holy to talk about it. I got it, you got it, we all got it. And uh, so we're going to talk about it today. But before we get there, I just want to say, those of you who were here last week uh, for Dean Sykes, did you enjoy that meeting? Did you, those of you that were here, three of y'all, okay, praise the Lord. Um, he, uh, we, we spent the whole day together. We had a lot of other ministry things to do, but we got to spend a lot of time talking. And he bragged and bragged and bragged about this church. And uh, you got to understand, he... He goes to churches all over the world, and uh, large churches, small churches, Teen Challenges, Canaan Lands, Becoming Center, places like that, and uh, just with the, the growth and the, the ability to, to ease into worship that you guys have, and uh, he, he just, you know, he said it was, it was comfortable for him to slip right into what he was here to do versus having to fight through some things. So I just wanted you to know that. Those of you who were not here uh, it was a good meeting. Uh, we had a lot of people set free from a lot of internal junk, and uh, you want to make yourselves available next time he's here, I promise you. Uh, however, the same Holy Ghost is still here today. Amen. And uh, although we love to have guest speakers and, and different people with different graces, we miss, sometimes we make a superstar out of the guests, and we miss what God's here to do every Sunday. So we're going to get right into it today. Take your Bibles and go to Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Y'all have all, you've all heard this before. and We're going to use some very, very familiar scriptures today. Uh, Jeremiah 1 and 5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I set you apart. Then 28, ver 28 chapters later, tw Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, uh, this is a familiar scripture, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope, and to give you a future. This is something that I have had. To, we talked a few weeks ago about some things personally with me that I've been dealing with. Sometimes you get so focused on ministry that you don't receive what's going through you. You, you, begin to, you begin to become the conduit, and the inside of the pipe doesn't get wet. And what happens is you get so busy, you get out of things, and you get out of shape spiritually. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, you get out of shape physically, which, you know, we're, we all have to deal with one of these. We get out of shape physically, we get out of sorts emotionally, we get out of touch relationally, or we get out of order spiritually. One of those things is happening with us at, at all times. And there is no such place as finding it. Everybody, everybody believes, oh, if I just get here, if I just accomplish that, or if God just provides this, or I'm believing God for that, or if this, just, if this would have never happened, that would have never. We're all living life. And life is real, and life can be harsh. And Jesus didn't come to make life easy. He came to give you a way to go through life. He came to show you that when tragedy happens, when things go on, when disappointment hurts and pains happen, how you deal with those things and how you spend more time with the Father than you do with Him. Now, Matthew eleven twenty eight says this. Uh, Matthew 11 and 28, he'll get up there as fast as he can. Matthew 11 and 28 says, Come to me, all you who labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, I'm going to read these three scriptures again. You don't have to turn there. Uh, Juan, we're going to land on Jeremiah 29 and 11. You can leave that one up. But I'm going to read these three for you again. Jeremiah 1 and 5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. Which means you're not a mistake. Amen. You may have made mistakes. That is not who you are. Jeremiah 20 and 11, for I know the plans that I have for you. This one he'll leave on the screen. For the, I know the plans I have for you. I declare the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Matthew 11 and 28 says, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Jeremiah 29 and 11, although is used a lot, 
I don't believe is properly broken down to a lot of people. Um, it says, I know I have the plans for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper, say prosper, prosper. and not to harm. To give a hope, say hope, hope. and future, say future. future. Some of y'all don't know what it's like to prosper, have hope, or have a future. And you think God's doing it. You understand God cannot go against his word. Y'all do, y'all agree with me, correct? If God says it, if God says every human being should have a third eye, every single one of y'all going to pop up weird looking all of a sudden. He cannot speak anything that it doesn't happen. The only thing that makes the power of God of none effect is man's tradition, which really is not tradition as much as this is what man believes. Okay? So when this is talking to you, and the King James says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. Not of evil. Say not of evil. Amen. Stop with this mindset that God is always doing something because you did something wrong. Amen. That is what I'm sent here to say today. I'm not going to preach a really long message. I don't plan to. Uh, that is what we deal with. That is what most people live with. That's, and I don't care how faithy you are and how much Bible you know. It is human nature to deal with cause and effect and say, because I did this, this is happening. There were times in the Bible when Jesus would heal people or, or when Jesus would walk up on people and they'd say, what did his family do for him to be blind and deaf and dumb and lame? And what, why was this? People are always trying to place blame. Here's a, this is revelational knowledge. You blame the enemy. Amen. Not even, you don't even get to blame Adam. You blame the enemy. When you place blame where it belongs, there's no chance for that blame to come on to you. Amen. We are blame, listen to me, we are blaming God for a lot of things and crediting the devil for a lot of things that both of those things shouldn't be happening. It amazes me the amount of people who will say, well, you know, the devil... It's just the devil. I've just been warring with the devil. I, I'm going to say something here. And I don't want to offend any of you. If you say that, don't get mad. I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be hard. But, but there is no such thing as you fighting the devil. Amen. <laughs> yeah, everybody okay? You ain't anointed enough. Amen. Let me tell you why. He's not omnipresent. He can't be everywhere. So if Kaylee's fighting the devil, there's no way that April's fighting the devil. Because he can't be in both places. So what you're fighting is, number one, yourself. Amen. Number two, there is demonic activity, but you're fighting something so small you haven't recognized it yet. And what you're fighting is something that has a voice with no power. What you're fighting is demonic activity that tells you your failure because you're so vocal about where you fail, you keep giving bullets to the one with the gun. And we've got to, we've got to understand that if God said, I know the thoughts that I think, at some point shouldn't we say, Lord, why don't you tell me what you think about me? Amen. Now listen, I can get on all y'all's Facebook page and find out what you think about just about everybody. Why, why don't you find out what God thinks about you? Do you know that God's not looking at you, finding fault? I believe sin is real, and I believe hell is hot. You better get that straight. But I don't believe that God wants you to live every day afraid of sin, but focused on victory. If you focus on victory, sin is so far off. If you focus on Jesus, sin stays so far away from you. Because you're not tempted to fall into old stuff because it's... God is so big and amazing that every day he could blow your mind. Every single day he could bring somebody into your path. He could give you a word for somebody. He can use you if you will let him. If you will let him. He wants you to be available. He wants you to be free. He wants you to be his voice. He wants you to say what thus saith the Lord. There are giftings, callings, anointings, and graces on the inside of you that you've never tapped into because you're so caught up in what has gone wrong. Amen. Now, you got to see this. you got to see that when you move into this place, now I'm going to read this list again, you begin to get out of sorts. And how it works is you get out of shape physically. I'm going to read this again. Out of shape physically. Out of sorts emotionally. How many of that? Don't raise your hand. 
Out of touch relationally, that's a big one right there. And out of order spiritually. Now, let me explain something to you. When you get out, when you get, when you get out of order in all of these areas, especially spiritually, everything relationally suffers. Everything. When you get out, when, when, when you begin to move into that place where things between you and God aren't quite right, things between you and people ain't quite right. Now listen, we have these fogs. Everybody has moments where they're, everybody has, now, now listen, in the spirit realm, everybody, and I'm talking about every human person has that time season, whether it's three days or a week and a half, where everything's just funky. You need to start recognizing that that is when the enemy is starting to talk to you. And your job is a very simple job. And that is to move back with the Lord, to what the Lord said to you last. God, the greatest advice you're ever going to get from anybody on the planet is always remember what God said last. If you remember what he said last, then you can move into what, he sa- what he's going to say next because you're opening that door by what he said last. God will lead you and guide you into all truth. Not half truth. All truth. Y'all okay? Y'all got real quiet real fast. He'll lead you and guide you into all truth. Because he has an expected end. And that expected end, look at the, very, the, the few words before that. Has no evil in it. Listen, don't, don't get convicted. Don't, don't beat yourself up because you, you say a lot of these things and, and, and all that. I'm, not try, I'm just trying to bring some light to some things. There are some things in our life that three things need to happen today. Number one, some things need to be shared. Now, be careful who you share your stuff with. Amen. Exodus chapter 18, verse 17 uh, I'm going to let Juan get that. I really want you to read these scriptures today because these are foundational scriptures. They're not hard. This is not anything deep. But sometimes, sometimes we chase the deep stuff and we forget the foundational stuff. And, and I'm guilty of that. So let's go to Exodus 18, verse 17. Now, I'm, just, I'm reading from uh, uh, the uh, American Standard Version. He's got the King James on the screen. Moses' father-in-law reply, replied and said, What you are doing is not good. Now, this is personal to me because this is where I've been at for the last few weeks. Moses' father-in-law replied said, what you are doing is not good. You and these people who come to you only to wear yourself out. The work is too heavy for you, and you cannot handle it alone. Now, as a minister of the gospel, that's very personal to me because I take, I, I, I'm anointed to do certain things. I'm anointed to carry certain things, but I'm not anointed to carry everything. And, and we, we tend to let people dump on us. Those of us who are somewhat mature Christians, we, we want people, people just begin to dump all their problems on us. Let me give you a secret that this lady right here taught me. Don't give your time to people who don't want your answers. We spent years in that office with people who won't listen. And we have learned, now she's really good at April. Let me tell you something about April Bailey. I'm just going to take my phone. Y'all act like she ain't right there. Now, if April don't want to talk to you, now she loves all y'all, but if you want them people she don't want to talk to, in Walmart she will be kind and cordial and keep walking. Amen. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Now me, I'm like, man, how you doing? How's them kids? And April's like, what are you doing? Now these are people, now I'm just, now look, I don't care if it's on video or not. Y'all need to hear me. These are people who, who will call me, text me, and, and, and wake me up at 3 o'clock in the morning over the same problem for 75 years, not care about the advice that you give them, talk about you when you're not around, use up your time, use up your resources, use up your money, and then tell you they love you to your face. Don't be caught in a relationship like that and call it God. God's not going to send anybody into your life to suck the life out of you. Amen. Period. Which is something I had to learn because I always wanted to love people where they are. I always want to love people where they are. Well, sometimes they are, they are where they are and they stuck. You know, they sound all deep. You know, thus saith the Lord, Pastor. Oh, they deep, but they in the concrete. They stuck. They don't want to grow. And you cannot let those people put their burdens on you. Because what happens is you tend to fight battles, and this, and I'm just being real uh, because we're getting our junk off. We're getting everything off of us because I have been here for so long now. It has so affected my spirit, my body, my mind that I've carried people's weight that I was not designed to carry. 
And you are suffering in your marriages. You're suffering in your parenting skills. You're suffering in your job. You're suffering with things that have nothing to do with what you're called to do. Because you haven't discerned the voices you need to be listening to. I could stand up here, and this is not uncommon. Now, all of you are wonderful people. Now, we're talking about the people that ain't here. Praise the Lord. I, I will stand up here and preach for six weeks on a subject. And get phone calls from somebody sitting in this room for six weeks asking me everything I just pre- I just gave you the answers for under the anointing of God for six weeks gave you the answers, which means you were on your phone. Everybody just went <laughs> playing games, checking your status. Let me tell you your status. Dumb. That's your status. <laughs> I wish there was a dumb status on Facebook, and I wish other people could, like. <laughs> I wish there was that button that like somebody could just click and say, yeah, he's dumb. I also wish our tags were like people's cell phones number, you hate move, that kind of thing. But that's just the world I live in. Now, y'all don't live there. But I live in this world where in my mind it's real and it needs to happen. I'm going to dial that tag number because they're slow. Or I, I think people, I, well, let me get up here. <laughs> I better get back to it. All right, so some things need to be shared. Galatians 6 and 2 says, To bear each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. I want to read it in the King James. Galatians 6 and 2, the King James says it this way, Bear ye one another's burdens, and, also, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Replace the word Christ with love. You fulfill the law of love when you bear one another's burdens. Listen to me. When you bear one another's burdens under the law of Christ, which means by the anointing of love, God has spoken to you to help somebody or somebody talk to you, and you bear things up together. Somebody just doesn't dump it all off on you. See, the biggest problem with Christians is we allow our Christianity to be used against us. Oh, well, you're just not a good Christian. I love that. I love it when people tell me I'm not a good Christian. Oh, you're just not a good Christian. Because my mom and them say, what about your mom and them? I ain't seen you in church in 75 years. And I'm not a good Christian. Because we cannot allow our faith to be used as a weapon against flesh. It is only to be used as a weapon against pain and hurt. You're supposed to move into a place to where you can bear one another's burdens and share and carry things with people who are anointed to help you or you're anointed to help them. You cannot, listen to me, you cannot help everybody. You can't. Let me tell you another thing. You barely can fix you. So why are you carrying everybody else's stuff? That was the greatest day when she said that to me. I didn't tell her it was great because I didn't want her to think I thought it was great. But she, it was great when she said to me, Alan, you can't even get yourself right. How are you going to get them right? Set me free. Because I've been trying to fix people. I've been trying to I spend the time getting gray, getting wrinkled, getting ugly. I mean, I used to be pretty, y'all. This is what y'all did to me. <laughs> and I used to make sure, I used to make sure that I did everything possible that when somebody walked away, they can't say that I didn't try to help them. When I found out, they were going to say that anyway. Because misery loves company. And misery wants you to share in misery. So number one, some things need to be shared. Number two, some things just plain out need to be stopped. Luke 10, 41 and 42 says, Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you're worried and upset about many things. Y'all know this text, Luke 10 and 41 and 42. But the only thing that's needed, Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. I read a book one time that was very, very, very amazing to me. And it said, being a Mary in a Martha world, learning how to worship when everybody wants to work. I said something last week, and I caught some flack. I got some messages from some people, and I'm going to say it again. I don't care how many serve shirts you wear and how many selfies you take cleaning somebody's high school. I don't care. I really don't give a rip. What I care about is being available to him. Now, I think those things are necessary, but when your service is more important than your servanthood, When your service is bigger than your servanthood, how do you serve him? His word. 
you got to be available. Let me tell you something. If you can hear God on painting somebody's classroom, you can hear God on loving somebody when they're hurting. If you can hear God on cutting somebody's grass uh, because it looks good on Facebook, you can hear God when it comes time to somebody's brokenhearted that you can go wrap your arms around them. If you can hear God on sweeping off somebody's patio, then you can hear God on when to shut your smart mouth. I don't care about your serve shirt. I care about your heart. I'm going to get more emails, but that's all right. I don't really care about that kind of stuff because I just delete. The most amazing thing I ever learned was that I could delete stuff without reading it. Just get rid of it. Some things need to be stopped. Now, now listen, learning to be a, learning to be a uh, Mary in a world where Martha's live is tough. But Psalms 46 and 10 says, be still and know. Say no. Be still and know that I'm God. Number three, the third thing needs to be dealt with, everything needs to be surrendered. Psalm 62 and 1 says, my soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. This is only, the only question I want to ask. I'm, it's 1145 and I'm almost done. You're witnessing a miracle. Because I know exactly what the Lord told me to say today and I know not to go past that. This is what the Lord asked me. What do you need to add to your do not to do list. And I'm going to ask you that. What do you need to add to your do not to do list? Who's pulling at you? That's not the Holy Ghost. What voice, what third voice is like, just like Adam and Eve in the garden. What third voice is pulling you to something you shouldn't be listening to? Where's your focus? Where's your eyes? Where's your heart being pulled to today? You have to understand who God is in your life. Truly, my soul waits upon God. From Him comes my salvation. From, now listen, salvation, although you get to accept salvation and be ready for heaven, you do understand that salvation is continual. Oh, come on. There's a reason there's a river of life. There's a reason that, that you're always going to another level. You're always growing. You're always being pushed forward. We like to say, we like to call, uh, we like to say Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah, everybody uses all these words. And we march around and scream things we don't know. The word Rapha means this. To slacken. To not allow to sink. Modern translation, drop it. Jehovah Rapha. Drop it. Oh, wait a minute. You just, now, people don't like to talk because there's, there's more Greek there that, that I can deal with. But let's deal with the word drop it. What is it that although he's telling you he's your source, he's your provider, he's your guide, he is all these things. But yet in that definition is the word drop it. Because he can only be your provider and your guider if you're not carrying junk. Y'all okay? What we're burdened with. Is what rules us. What we're carrying is who we are. If you're burdened, listen to me now, if you're burdened with souls, then you're carrying the anointing of an evangelist. If you're burdened with drama, you're carrying drama. If you're burdened with worship, then you're carrying the anointing of freedom because that's what worship leads us into. If you're carrying gossip, you're, you have the burden of gossip. And you know how hard it is to keep all them lies straight? It amazes me the people that would just continue to fulfill their own prophecy of their life and keep going in the same circles because they're unwilling to get rid of the junk. Now, I've made up my mind. I'm just, just at a place in my life. I'm just, I'm just at a place. Uh, we were talking about this yesterday. I'm at a place where I'm just, I'm just tired of being. You know, the Bible says to be everything to everybody. But we misinterpret what that means. That doesn't mean that you get, that, that doesn't mean you get to hound somebody or somebody gets to hound you. That means under the anointing at that moment, you release what he releases into you and you're done. My burden is easy. Y'all looking at me like, this should be deeper. This is the easy stuff. That's right. My burden is easy. My yoke is light. You know what a yoke is? 
See, we don't live in an agricultural society anymore, so we don't want to understand what the yoke means. We love that. Oh, these birds eat yoke is like, praise the Lord, hallelujah, shunda. <laughs> you know what a yoke is? A yoke is what they use on an ox or, or, or any, any animal of bird, uh, beast of burden. That's a big word. That they walk up to it unknowingly, put their head in a stock, and, they're, and they, are, they are clamped and bolted to be led by something they can't get off of them. Yet Jesus says, my burden is easy, my yoke, listen, is light. This is what the modern Christian needs to hear. I thank God for grace. I thank God for faith. I thank God for the anointing, and I thank God for worship. But we were still bought with a price. We still have a yoke. But it's the yoke of a king who wants to lead us into his kingdom. Oh, do you see it? He's called us into a place to where he's guiding us into all truth. Let me tell you something. When you understand all truth or even the truth you need at that moment, there's nothing like something breaking you through to a, yeah, you're going to have the next problem on the next level, but if you learn how to move into truth, it becomes truth to truth to truth. The Bible calls it glory to glory to glory, precept upon precept. The Bible calls it moving up. The Bible calls, uh, calls it understanding the cloud of witnesses, that there you have help. There are more with you than there are against you. And you're living in your past, and God is calling you to your future, and he's using a yoke to do it. But we've gotten so free that it's just, I'm just going to do, no, 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 it's time for you to settle down, honey, and get discipled somewhere. You know what today's Christian don't want to hear? You better get your butt in a church under a pastor and stay there. Oh, Jesus, I just felt the dark. Because here's what happens. People use this as a weapon and it is a sword, but it's not a shotgun. A sword, if you really... Now, let, let me... Oh, I told you I was going to get you out early. I'm going to try. The Bible says this is sharper than a two-edged sword. Do some research. It's not really the sword. It's the scalpel. Which means this was designed to do surgery. This was designed to cut away cancers and cut away things that are holding you back and to 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 pull you away and to separate you from that which is causing harm but we want to just continually call it a weapon this is the weapon of my warfare your warfare is with yourself you need to get active you need to get focused you need to get discipled and you need to get the word in you because who you are shows up when pressure comes. Everybody's free till pressure comes. Everybody's got it figured out till pressure comes. When the word's in you, and that's your response, then you know you're getting there. April, when we were in Texas, some of y'all have heard this story a bunch of times. When we were in Texas, and Brother Mac was so hard on her that day. It was the first time he was ever tough on her. I thought it was funny. It was, a, yeah, it was the only time, too. Yeah, he's tough on me all the time. Funniest day of my I laughed. I was so grateful he was getting on somebody else other than me. <laughs> she could only receive that from him because of the years of her learning that he loves us. Amen. She couldn't receive the correction up until then. I know from being married to her for so long, if, if she hadn't received love from that man, then I would be left in Dallas, Fort Worth, trying to find a flight home. Amen. That's the truth. Now, my point is this. Mac was a mere man. He was a man. Most people can't accept how much God loves them. God's love is so amazing you can't accept it. And I can tell, I can tell when people can't accept that God loves them because when I'm ministering to them or you're listening to their conversation, all they talk about is well but. Perfect love. Say perfect love. Perfect. Casts out what? All fear. Where's pain come from? Fear. Where's doubt come from? Fear. Everything in your life is faith toward him or faith in fear. Everything. Everything. Now, I'm going to say this and then I'm done. Everything in our lives, my life, your life, everybody's life, is a faith battle that's won or a faith battle that's lost. Everything. 
If we're, if we're struggling in an area, we need to go back for number one, check our love walk. Number two, check where our faith is. Everything. If you're having victory in an area and everything's looking good, you better go check your love walk. You better go check your faith. Because the truth is not, did God provide? Because through the blood of Jesus, he gave us everything. 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 Say everything. Everything. I, I, I was sitting, and we, we use Mac, so let, let me just say this, and then I'm wrapping up. I was sitting with Matt Gober in the early days. I was sitting in his office. before April really even got to know him. We were, we were in the old building. We'd only been there a short period of time. We didn't have any money. Offerings were bad. I mean, it just, we, we just knew we were called to miss. We, people plant churches now and explode with 500 people. We didn't know how to do that. We just start preaching. So we're sitting there, and there were things I wanted to do. The Becoming Center, I, there were things in my heart that I'll, even all 20 years ago, that's, that's things I always wanted to do. And I'll never forget sitting and sharing my heart with him. And he said this. He leaned, he leaned over his desk, and, 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 and I felt about that big. And he said to me, he said, you're looking across this desk at a man that you think could write you a check and have answers for you. Truthfully, that's what I was doing. What I was doing was expecting something to come into my hands to help me with ministry. And then that was the moment that I learned, if God's not your source, you'll never do ministry. Because there are things that have happened in this church that money cannot buy. There are things, you're sitting in chairs, you're, you're in a building, you're, 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 you're surrounded by equipment, you're, you're in a place where money did not pay for a lot of it. I mean, yes, we, put, we wrote checks, but the truth is how things came to pass had nothing to do with our ability to have money. Y'all with me? Because what we've done is we've decided that God is our sugar daddy. God, it, it, my God, if we're in the word of faith, it's just Christmas. Let's just create, let me just, I'm believing you for this and this and this and this and this. And we never deal with our heart. Never deal with it. So we have to get back in shape. We have to get back in order. We have to get back focused. We have to remember some things need to be shared. Some things need to be stopped. And some things need to be surrendered. Amen. Wherever you're at in that now is your moment. Stand to your feet with me.